vortex in its flow which enables it not only to reoxygenate itself but also to cool itself. The oxygen is passive and it's not aggressive towards the water itself because of this movement of the water is cool and after it has disposed of all the pathogens by over oxygenating them then it returns to seek union with those mother substances which are as yet unfertilized and this increases the energy and of course there's a certain amount of birth of new water in the process so you have a tremendous rejuvenation of the water body on the way to the point of delivery the core of the vortex is identifiably cooler than the surrounding water masses by as much maybe as 0.2 of a degree centigrade so in the summation of all these little cooling processes then the water when allowed to flow naturally cools itself quite considerably and so the vortex is a cooling process not only that the water re-energizes itself and it also divests itself of harmful parasites pathogens and so on because of the difference in the specific weight of oxygen and hydrogen in the water and other substances the oxygen is thrown to the side of the pipe and directed to the pipe walls water moving in such a way can transport ores and other material similar to that down the middle, down the center of the water vortex without touching the sides and actually can improve the quality of the ores such as iron ore in transit on the way to the point of use because as the oxygen is gradually consumed some of it by the extermination of pathogenic bacteria there is a reduction process occurring in the water flow itself so the iron ore is already partially reduced so to speak um, before it arrives at the smelter our spinal column in German is expressed as a spiral column and each of the vertebra are called vortices and so when you take this image in conjunction with the German view of the structure which upholds the human body then here again in their concept it is also related to movement and vertical movement energy is primary and physical form is a secondary effect in terms of the DNA molecule that is the programming which creates the whole of the physical body so in, in elaboration of this movement energy creates the pathways through which it wants to move or in which it wants to express itself it's very important to begin to employ systems or to convert existing systems into ways of moving water which follows the law governing the flow of water takes temperature into consideration takes the alternating pulsating movement of water into consideration because this is a substance which is a living substance and it cannot impart life unless it is itself alive there is this constantly changing aspect of natural form which is reflected in the seashells reflected in the dynamics of the universe it's this fall shape nature is not working there's not wheels and wheels but there are falls and falls there's one spiral moving inside another spiral as energy because energy it must be remembered is always primary and physical form is the secondary effect we have to turn this around in our heads and remember that energy is primary that nothing can appear in the physical until it has been first conceived of energetically and the formation of anything physical is the concentration of the image until the physical form is realized and this is one of the things that Victor Schauberger stated on many occasions that energy is primary and physical form is the secondary effect this concentration of higher energies the material energies gradually coalesce into more energies of a lower frequency finally having the physical effect in the physical form 
analogously we might say that the energies coming from the sun, the X-ray energies and the high frequency energies of the sun impinge on the Earth's atmosphere and they cause thermal variations, they cause the movement of winds which is a lower form of energy than the energy coming from the sun and these winds blow around the planet and on the surface of the planet are the oceans and the winds impinge on the water which is a more dense medium than the air and waves are created and finally on the shore these waves create ripples on the sand which is the very densest of the medium and so you can see how the higher energies of sun are actually responsible for the ripples on the ocean floor so the ultimate effect if we're talking purely energetically so to speak is that we've had three levels of energy demodulation so to speak from the sun to the air to the water and finally the physical form the ripples on the sand have been created the whole process of nature's ev evolution or her workings um, are put back to front because things are taken as <coughs> a cause when in fact they are an effect and they are an effect in a long series of causes and effects so and what we are seeing around the world today in terms of the treatment of water um, and the forest are the massive inundations in China, in Bangladesh and in other places in the world which are due to deforestation what happens here is related again to this peculiar anomaly state of water Victor described a movement of temperature which uh, from any higher temperature down towards um, 4 degrees as being what he called a positive temperature gradient and a negative temperature gradient was a temperature which moved up in the opposite direction from 4 degrees either down or upwards anyway away from 4 degrees which was the condition of temperaturelessness or, or indifference as Victor called it now the temperature gradient plays an enormous role in the, the Earth's water balance and it's something which is not really understood and it's very important that it should be understood because if it's not we shall go on having the same series of drought um, deluge, drought, deluge and these massive um, flooding and inundations which we're experiencing at the moment now water has to be handled with great sensitivity it is a substance which is alive it has to be treated as something alive therefore it should not be exposed to excess heat it should not be exposed to excess pressure all those things we know in our human body are destructive and the same thing applies to water